I'm always looking for avenues to bring Pio back to the spotlight. I have some interesting ideas on combining some working and existing deck lists with some old staples to try to bring Pio back to its heyday. Wish me luck. All right, welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to a test league. I'm going to test out a design concept for Paradox Outcome PO in this league. I have taken a look at some of the successful recent PO attempts. Um, Bryant Cook's Luris Blue Black PO deck from Eternal Weekend North America in paper. Mark Tobias's uh, Breach PO, successful both in paper at Eternal Weekend in, in both basically in all three Eternal Weekends that Mark went to, as well as recently winning uh, the Sunday Challenge. And then I've also taken a look at some past PO lists, very specifically the Noop style um, repeal Saga PO. So what I have in front of you is kind of a mishmash of those concepts into what I think is an acceptable shell for the current metagame. We are going to play Luris and play a Saga Luris shell with some baubles. Uh, not bobble or not is not the focal point of this deck. You have a lot of draw uh, in other capacities. Bobble is okay though, as it's a nice recurrable draw engine with Luris and increases your artifact artifact count for Metalcraft for Mox Opal. This is at its core just a Volt Key deck. It's actually pretty similar to the Turbo Volt Key Sheer Con list as well. Um, just leaning a little bit heavier into the paradoxical outcome aspect, whereas the Turbo Volt Key list is kind of just splashing PO as a blue card slash powerful threat. So the main way we are winning in this deck is assembling time bolt key. So no null rod in this version. Um, we are looking all in at artifacts and assembling vault key. Of course, that means we can still win in other ways. We have uh, saga tokens, and this deck should be pretty good in a saga mirror. And the reason I think it should be good in a saga mirror is because one, you have this over the top threat, you have a bigger uh, artifact mana base uh, to cast Lorien Revealed. And you have the over the top there is the PO for those who were, it was not clear. And then I also, I'm going to play four repeals for Noop style. Uh, I was surprised that this didn't persist into the Luris Saga metagame as if you're engaging in a construct war, uh, being able to one for one answer a construct token uh, with a draw spell here is quite powerful. It kind of serves a similar role to Dress Down. However, a dress down would kill our own saga tokens in the mirror. And we can't really afford to be losing our saga tokens if we're trying to battle via saga tokens because we don't have wasteland in our deck. Um, theoretically, you probably could play wasteland in this deck, uh, but I think it would probably take away from the blue cow and artifact uh, requirements to play paradoxical outcome. So instead, in games where we are looking to win with tokens, Hopefully we can gain board superiority with some repeals. Um, the one thing I, I didn't really like about uh, Brian's list was there's four Flusterstorms, and Flusterstorm just doesn't counter very many decks in the current metagame. Uh, so while the Flusterstorm is great at protecting your own PO, I think a lot of the cards that stop PO these days are, you know, more conditional like creature permanence. Um, and if you are like playing against a four negation deck, you can just simply play on their end step. So I think two fluster storms is the number that I would play maxed out at. It's not like there's a lot of doomsday running around. There could end up being more doomsday in the future with how well it did during the showcase, but we'll have to see. I am going to play the one Hercules recall. I think it's just worthwhile to always have in your deck for shops. And then obviously against construct uh, battles, it can still do some minor work. Uh, anything else interesting in this deck? Uh, I opted not to play Tinker or Yogwell. I don't really think Tinker is worth it for just Vault Key, especially uh, with how vulnerable Tinker is to negation and fluster and that kind of thing. Um, you don't really want that kind of clunky three drops in your deck. Uh, Yogwell, same story. It might be I end up putting the Yogwell back in. We'll have to see. But I think if you kind of go like a little bit leaner and meaner with these spells, that way you have you know your clunky top end of just Lorians and Pios. Uh, we'll have to see, though, of course. I might end up putting Yagwell back in. You don't have to play Mystical because you don't have um, Tinker in your deck. So just one Vampiric. Basically, we're mono blue, very much Fanoop style. But the Splash is basically free for the two most powerful black cards in Vampiric Demonic. 
because you do need to have enough underground seas to reliably cast your Lurus. I kind of wanted to fit another island in this deck somehow, but I, I chose to put it in the sideboard instead. We can board the island in against a wasteland deck. Sideboard has the tutorable tabernacle, a bunch of different anti-graveyard saga targets. I'm going to try out a Shieldra's Edict as a different kind of creature removal that uses off-color Moxon. Um, we're going to play Dismember as just the best threat or best removal spell for Mono White with the one snuff out also being very powerful. Uh, a second Hercules Recall for Shops and then some anti-combo cards with a second Negation and two Traps. I like maxing out on two Negation, two Traps and that kind of this kind of setup, so it makes a lot of sense to me. So we're going to try out this deck in the League. If it goes well, I might play it in the Challenge tomorrow. See you in round one. Are you interested in weekly vintage metagame recommendations? Do you want to see your deck list played on my channel? Or maybe you are just looking for the best way to support my vintage content. Make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let's battle. All right, here we go for round one. We've got a cat. And we have no mana. Our deck is on uh, 12 lands, which is typically the number of lands you want to play in PO. Uh, but Saga is some minuses towards your land count, and Lorien is some plus towards your land count. So I think with the additional artifact count for Mox Opal, 12 sounds like the right place to be. We do have the 13th land in the board for matchups where we're getting wasteland. Uh, obviously, Lorien Revealed doesn't count for a full land, as it's just as Saga doesn't count for a full land either, um, and is evidenced by this double Lorien no mana source hand. Okay, definitely keeping this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Snapcaster. I don't think I'll have double blue. Hmm. If I go all in on Saga, <laughs> a classic Justin scenario, uh, I can do things like get Lotus and Time Walk, Snap Time Walk. I think I'd rather just have the ability to brainstorm with our Saga and our Flooded Strand here. Could be wrong, though. We'll have to see. I'm not actually even sure this Snapcaster is supposed to be in the deck. I just usually like it in PO decks, and we have a lot of spells. I think it's probably fine. Uh, of course, our opponent is immediately on Bazaar of Baghdad, which doesn't seem good for us. No activation of Bazaar of Baghdad it means they don't have any hollow ones. Maybe they have multiple stuff things. Um... Well, I definitely don't want to time walk. I think the answer is Saga Go. If they're holding on to Vigor, I don't want to play into these these Moxen into it. So just Saga Go, I guess. I do have a Needle in my deck if Saga completes, but that will be probably too late as I'm on the draw in this game. But maybe we draw like Time Vault Key or something. There's some options. Oh, my opponent activated Bazaar and pitched two Grizzlebrands. So I assume we lose because I don't have a force in my hand and uh, my opponent has a swamp. I assume that means we've lost the game. I guess that's what happens when you play around Bazaar as a metagame call with this saga play and don't have a force. Get to take my time walk and kill me with... They pitched a reanimated grief, so I'm almost assuredly dead. Not much I can really do here. Uh, if they animate dead the Grizzlebrand, I have repeal. That's about our only saving grace. The problem is this Grizzlebrand will draw them 14 cards, so... Yeah, not great. Even if I had a force, I would have gotten griefed here. Pretty solid reanimator start, all things considered. Um, just going to grief this, I assume. And then uh, Traxa, Traxa, Archon. You don't see very much reanimator in Vintage. The reason being is there's tons of graveyard hate in comparison to something like Legacy. Um, well, now I think we're just super dead. Um, because Legacy, like, you might have, might have one or two pieces of Graveyard Hate in your sideboard, and Vintage, everybody has, like, four to eight pieces of sideboard, because Bizarre is so broken. So, 
when you end up with um, all that hate for Dredge and Countervine and Agrovine, then you um, this kind of deck gets hit, and it's hard to operate through that amount of hate. So if we were to take 6, 18, and die. Okay. I mean, it's still obviously powerful, right? Uh, Bazaar is definitely strong, but hard to get going sometimes. I'm not actually sure Tab is good in this matchup. Because you need mana to re-bring re your things in. Um, Probably not. Snuff out, definitely not good. So let's just bring in Needle, Second second Needle, Lantern, Cage, Crypt, Negation. Do I want Trap? Do I think they're going to cast enough spells that I want Trap? I don't feel like they need to cast enough spells that I... I that, oh, I guess this Shield Redeed is kind of nice, though. That's sweet. Uh, these repeals look real bad. Hercules looks real bad. Fluster looks good. Peel looks bad. Dig is probably too slow. Maybe keep in one repeal for an animate dead. I think the real way 4, 13, 14, 16, 22. Okay, I mean, it's still plenty of blue cards. The real way we beat this deck is just having counter magic. But I kept a Saga hand and uh, did not have counter magic, so. This hand has counter magic, repeal, edict, so. Pretty solid one. Already edict showing up as better than snuff out or dismember or cut down, but obviously kind of a narrow, narrow situation. Though, if they put in a Grizzle Brand, Eldritch Edict's not going to do very much, huh? Another problem... Oh, and that's really good for us. Um, another problem with these reanimator decks is playing Bizarre Baghdad costs a land drop, and it costs you a blue or black you know, land for turn. You also don't have ways of recouping your Bizarre card disadvantage besides like putting a super creature into play. So fundamentally, kind of a weaker game plan. Like, it's weird because it's like a stronger game plan, right? Because you're putting in a, um, a thing. I think I'm just going to let this go and... Obviously, they can hard cast a grief, but um, you're doing a stronger thing. But it's like fun. The game plan itself is like fundamentally weaker. Oh, they pitched a dark ritual. All right, I'll just hard cast a negation on that. That's a one for two. Three cards left in my opponent's hand. See what they do. Up to five. Down to two. So if they have like thought seize plus reanimate, that would get us here. So if they reanimate like an Archon um, instead of a Grizzle Brenner and Traxa, we'd be okay. Oh, they put a Vampire Hex Mage. So they, they are subverting my anti-graveyard plan by trying to do a um, Dark Depths plan. Uh, I don't care about that, really. So what that does mean is I should bring all my repeals back in. I have like enough cards to match both of these game plans, so I have a Shielders Edict and a Repeal in 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 my graveyard or in my hand. This uh, Dark Depths Hex Mage plan is not going to go very well against our deck. Looks like they are going down to zero cards to reanimate a Grizzlebrand here, which we will just force. Uh, I guess I can pitch Repeal. That way, if I draw a blue card, I can still have Force for another one. And they're not really close to Dark Depths, I guess, anyways. P.O. All right, so now I have Force, and I can get a Luris and use that to win the game. Though, it'd be nice if I had, like, a Bobble or something. Can't ask for everything, Justin. But I do think our deck is pretty well suited for this. Let's go get another Underground C... They are Luris. Still have a force. Now opponent can turn dead cards into real cards using Bazaar of Baghdad. Up to four, down to one. But we still have another counter spell. So it's going to be pretty hard for them to recover after we counter another one. Thespian Stage. Grief. Hanx Mage. Uh, Saga Gaming. That'll help close the clock here. 
I also have hard cast force. I can do an end step PO for one if I so desire. I could do it for two if I really wanted to. Double swamp into. Do they play like a. Oh no, that anime dead. All right, so let's cast a hard cast force. I don't really want a Grizzlebrand entering the battlefield. Now, Dodge Rattler Force would be great. Saga's okay. If we don't get hit this turn by a top deck exactly reanimate, we can just clear their yard with our Saga. And then they'll lose. They've went, they've conceded. They've seen the line. All right, so the only thing I want to change is I'm going to bring all of my repeals back in so we're confidently answering both game plans. Um, I'm going to bring one Needle out. They only have Bazaar to hit, so I think just one Needle is fine. Um, probe Cage. I don't really think I'm allowed to go down another land. Demonic. I guess Merchant Scroll is kind of bad. I might even just trim... A PO. It doesn't feel like how we're... I mean, we can probably overpower them. We haven't seen any blue cards, so maybe they're mono black. So we could easily just have like a broken PO draw. Maybe the answer is we simply trim this probe. I mean, who needs a probe, really? Because if our opponent is on mono black, we can have just a mox, mox, mox PO draw. Speaking of mox, 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 let's definitely keep this. Uh, it'd be a shame if we have to pitch a card to force in the turn one here, but... Maybe they'll do that bizarre pass thing again. Doesn't look like it. Thoughtsies. Do I want to force? No, I think if my opponent wants to take the Ancestral or the Force out of my hand, it's fine. If they think they get cheeky and take the Lorien, I think that's also fine. I think I'd rather just make sure this is a one-for-one. One. Be interesting to see what my opponent chooses. They could, I guess they could take the Ruby. That's also getting cheeky. But I have a draw for turn plus a Bobble. Lots of live things still would have a force and have the ability to recall. I think this is pretty well set up against Thoughtseize. We'll see what they do. I'll be interested to see what they do, actually. It's not it's straightforward. Ancestral makes sense. Especially if I like have to use this Lauren to get a land, I lose my force. Uh, let's see what's on the top of my deck. I don't have any reason to get a blue card right now anymore, or a blue land anymore. That's really good. So let's do that. So I'm going to leave that one on top. I'm going to go get the Luris because it's free. I uh, can't play it, obviously. But if I do end up hitting a land drop, I can play it. I guess I technically could Lorien for it. So I could. I have choices now. I can force pitch PO or I can... Uh, force pitch Lorien and give myself outs to this PO. I guess it's always going to be force pitch PO because I can just go get a black land and play my Luris plus Bobble Loop and that's pretty strong as well. That's another, th another thought seize. Uh, if they thought seize, Dark Ritual. Pretty sure I'm going to let the Dark Ritual resolve. They would have to have a lot to go right here. They'd have to have a uh, they have to have a way to get a card in the yard, a way to get a card out of my hand, and a way to reanimate, which is asking for a lot. They have a way to get a card out of the yard, down to three cards, so they could easily have uh, a reanimate plus a thing here, and that puts a grizzle brand in play. Could be a problem. What? Grief pitching in tomb. All right. Guess I should have just hit the swamp. I guess if I hit the swamp, they can't do anything this entire turn. So I should just. But if I hit the ritual, I, I keep thinking they're like blue and force of will, but they're mono black. I should just take. I should just hit the thing by myself my turn. The problem is like my turn's not good, right? Like hitting their dark ritual and buying myself a turn isn't very good. It buys me a Luris plus a bobble, so it draws me two cards. I have to draw it into another force, which is like very. That's asking for a lot, right? So, I don't know. Like, I don't think buying a turn is, like, particularly strong here. Oh, Demonic. Yeah, that's sick. So, Demonic, and reanimate, reanimate the Grizzlebrand, draw seven. It's not the worst. They can only draw seven, and we can untap and PO. They have to draw a Grief here, right? Or, like, Black Lotus plus something. Grief or Unmask. Because if they leave me with this PO, I'm going to win, right? I hope. Oh, they drew Grief. They should take PO. Yeah. 
All right, well, I have draws still. I have Demonic, and I have Time Vault. And I still have this backup Luris plan. The problem is they're going to draw another seven. Yeah, I, I, like, theoretically, I could have forced Dark Ritual, but I'm just not convinced that's good. Because I have to pitch PO, and then I'm just doing Luris, which is the same thing I'm doing here, except there's no Grizzlebrand in play. <laughs> but then the next turn, they would be able to do the same thing. Really, right? Maybe not, because they kind of needed two mana for Demonic Tutor. Hmm. But if they just had, like, Bizarre plus Reanimate anyways, then, like, hitting their Dark Ritual doesn't do anything when it buys me a turn. Wow, they their Grizzlebrand draw seven drew gr double Grief? Double black card? Well, now shit's freaking destroyed. I think my opponent had uh, some nice set of draws here. Pretty unfortunate. They should just take the Luris, I guess. I don't know. Probably just take the Luris. You don't want to let me like draw fetch land, play Luris, and get a bobble activated anyways. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I can still draw PO, though I did board one out, right? No. I can draw PO, I can draw Demonic, I can draw Time Vault. I guess because they have Grizzlebrand, maybe I should keep two needles in. Draw Needle. Could draw Flusterstorm. Fucking great. Yeah, so, I mean, I had one choice in this game, and the choice did lose me the game. Not saying that that means it's wrong. I mean, I had multiple choices, but I think the one major choice was, do I want to force the Dark Ritual? There are so many ways that I just lose on the spot by, like, going for the anemic bobble Luris line. And then they, like, don't have reanimate. They have animate dead. Like, come on, man. I guess, technically, I'm still winning this game if I draw Vault Key. Which is crazy. But... So yeah, they're mono black reanimator. With they brought in like a maybe they boarded it back out, but they have um orbargs so they can go post board um twenty twenties. Post board I wish they it just kept post board twenty twenties. We're much better off against post board twenty twenties than we are against reanimator. Though I don't even think our reanimators like we still have uh, six for six forces, two flusters. I don't know, and then like all the sideboard reanimator cards. I just I think I was a little outdrawn, unfortunately. All right, time vault. I'll draw my opponent right here, right now. Survey says Lorian reveals. <laughs> so sad, man. This is exactly 13 damage, too. What? That's so gross. I mean, my opponent had to hit double unmask slash grief on their draw seven and they did oh i was one turn away from volky yeah i don't know a little unlucky i would say all right round two i wasn't uh unhappy with how round one went obviously the result was unfortunate but the way the deck played out looked okay i was okay with some of the choices there Something to note is I have this pedal in here instead of like Opal three. Um, should keep in she could keep in our heads what different hands and things would look like if this pedal was an Opal. Here looks worse. Double Mox, no Lyris. Workshop, Needle. What are you gonna blind name? I always, I think I would always blind name Bizarre Baghdad. I think that's gonna win you the most matches. Flooded Strand, sure. And then Revoker, you should probably blind name Lorian Revealed. Oh, I guess I can't play Bizarre Baghdad because I have a Luris. So I would name Wasteland, and I would name Lorian Revealed. I would name Wasteland and Lorien Reveal, I think, in the blind against a Larissa player. 
Tokyo. Show me your last card. It's a stone coil serpent. I drew a mental misstep, a classic scenario. Just in case we get wastelanded, I'm going to play the underground sea and pass. My opponent's not doing a lot, but we're also not doing a lot. We have a throw your whole board back into your hand with the Hercules recall. We kind of need more Moxon. Wish we had like a, they drew a nettle cyst. I see. Uh, are they going to equip the clock? Doubtful, right? Could have a Bowmaster here. Yeah. Uh, I need to draw Moxon to P.O. Orion revealed. Can't really use that here if I end up using a Hercules. Well, this is definitely a classic PO game where I just don't have enough Moxon to play the game. Funnily enough, it's like better if they play pre-combat Stone Coil Serpent, because then they can replay things post-combat. All right, this is good for me. I'm gonna let them do this, and then in combat, I'm gonna Hercules them. And then all they get to replay is Mox Mox and then probably name pedal. But we just bought multiple turns. See if they rename Lorian. I think they'll just name pedal. And then we can use our Lorian. I'm going to obviously keep the pedal in play for my academy though. They're thinking about not naming pedal. I already pitched a Lorient of negation, so I feel like it'd be fairly hard for them to name negation. And I'm almost at the point where I'm casting Lorians. They name pedal. Okay. Uh, another PO. Basically a terrible draw. All right. PO will be a fine draw if I do end up drawing a Moxon, because I'll have enough mana to use Academy and cast PO for two right away. But I currently haven't drawn the Moxon, so. Well, definitely they've drew Wasteland off the top. Oh, okay. oh wait, they hit my Underground Sea. So that I couldn't play Luris? Sure. I think I'd rather just hit this Academy. They don't know I'm on PO, I guess, so maybe it makes more sense to keep me off Luris. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm just cashing this mental misstep value. I guess it does make my previous statement about Wasteland worse if there are workshops. All right, Moxon, please. I drew Force of Will. All right. This is definitely a classic PO. Take six here. Game is still very winnable if I do draw a Moxon. Though I do have to pitch one of my POs here. Just to slow the clock down. Alright, I take six. That means any artifact off the top also kills me, which is bad. Uh, yeah, I can't even, like, do anything. Can't even crack this. I don't know. I, the cards I have in my deck just have not done anything that does anything. So, not great. Not a good look. I even had a Hercules. I even had a Hercules. Snapcaster would have been a lot better of a draw. Could have like snap probed, drawn a free card, then PO'd it back later. Well, the good news is I still think this matchup is incredible. We have double Hercules, we're a PO deck. We have negation, extra island. The matchup looks quite good. Probably keep Needle for Wasteland and just take out like Fluster, Fluster, Probe, Mist Up. Maybe we have a Shieldred's Edict? Don't know. Seems fine though. Don't really want to dismember our snuff out. I feel like Shield Strategic is probably better. Don't think I need a second needle. 
So, I mean, this this deck looks quite good against shops. I mean, all PO decks look good against shops. I don't have four Hercules in my sideboard, but still. What we really need in that first game was to draw a second Mox at any point in the game or some kind of draw spell that we can resolve. We just like didn't have ability to resolve a Lorien or a PO. So we didn't have any Moxen, didn't have any Saga that we would have gotten Wastelanded, so maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, I mean, this hand's nice. I got a basic. I have an Ancestral. I can go basic Ancestral, and I still have the ability to play out my Moxen and not overdraw. Really solid hand. I guess an Ancestral in my last hand would have been good, too. But I guess an Ancestral is always good, unless they have a whole Breacher or something. Mm, yeah. Think about round one. I don't know. I'm sure someone in the comments will say that I was right to it would be right to hit the dark ritual, but I'm just not sure. Pitching a blue card was just such a huge cost. Mm, play out the mana crypt. See, this is like the spot where it sucks that I'm Luris. Right? Because if this spot was regular PO without Luris, then I could just vamp for Tinker. I'd force their one play, I vamp for Tinker, I tinker away my mana crypt, and I get a Citadel and I win the game on the spot. I guess I theoretically still just win the game on the spot, right? I force their first play, I vamp for another PO, and then I PO twice. Or maybe I vamp for a Sensei's top. No, that's probably worse. I had a piece of vault key, I could vamp for the other piece of vault key. They have double sphere. I guess things get a little more annoying. It looks like they have double sphere. I guess they theoretically can also have a null rod. In which case I have to vamp for Tolarian maybe. Yeah, they did have a null rod. I mean, I guess I could have just let Sphere resolve, but it's so bad, right? Can't really go for Hercules here because... I guess Talarian doesn't even get me to Piho. So I guess it just has to be Hercules. Oh, no. So bad. I, 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 uh, could I have... Could I have... Just let Sphere resolve. I mean, I would have been able to force Null Rod, and they wouldn't be able to cast Null Rod. But then, like, again, just another spot where it'd be much. Yeah, I probably just let the Let Sphere resolve. It just makes my game so much worse letting them have a Null Rod here. I guess it, maybe it makes their game worse too, but Let's see what they do. I don't have to hurt Curls right away either. I can wait until I draw more Mox in. I am, like, restricted by the fact that I have a mana crypt, but not that restricted. Like, they're not doing anything. Play out my lands. Oh, now I just have Repeal for Null Rod. Ooh, that's exciting. I mean, I think I'm winning this game. It just felt bad. Okay, well, now I'm going to have to Hercules them. Academy? Uh oh. Oh, then nothing. Interesting. Uh, I guess I don't have enough basics. I guess I still want to get all my basics. Uh, this is just a classic shops. They don't have uh, any clock. That's why you play Nettle System patchwork in the deck now. All right. Am I going to lose my third crypt flip in a row? No. Ah, uh, Lorian Revealed. Interesting. I guess it's better to cast Lorian Revealed than it is to cast P.O. Because the P.O. gets better. And I, that, and all of that. Yup. All right, I think I'll time walk. I was like, could have uh, repealed my own like Mana Crypt or something, but I just think that's... Not as useful as waiting and holding it for like a null rod or something like that. All right, so now we're just going to PO off and opponent will concede. I 
Mana Crypt hates me. I should really buy a new one. Let me just establish Volt Key and win. Maybe I do want to have Yogwill still. It just doesn't feel necessary, right? Like, why do we need Yogwill in our deck? We don't. All right. So what do we want to do? Definitely want to cycle some amount of repeals. Force. Get a Luris. Let's play a Luris. Let's replay our Lotus. Still have Volts. Do I want to repeal again? Sure. Because I should not have replayed my top. Hmm. I was just thinking I had hard cast force, so I didn't have to do anything that mattered, but. Draw an extra card, maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, they're just losing to Sagas, right? Even if I don't kill them in that turn, does that really matter? I guess I should have responded to that and just made them lose a mana. Okay, cool. Uh, interesting. Sure. Do I want to bring in Mind Break Trap on the draw? Do I care? Mm, I mean, it might be better than a Bobble and a Dig. Kind of interesting. Yeah, so far I kind of like this Edict card. It has a little bit of versatility, kind of hits everything. Hasn't had any downside yet. Have to keep that in mind as well. There's a lot of other cards we can play in this slot. So... There's no, like, really good two-mana kill thing cantrip, is there? Like, I know that people play Soul Rend or whatever, but, like, actually kills lots of things like this does. This kills a Karn. A lot of, good, a lot of good things to like about this card. Force, Saga, P this hand stinks. Try again. Ugh. Can't really keep these hands against shops. If they simply null rod us or sear us on turn one, we just lose. Have to mulligan it. Keeping this one. Just gonna keep all of our mana in a payoff. Not much else we can do. Don't think I want to get rid of any mana. Especially if it's just sphere, we can still maybe ancestral. It's Null Rod, obviously things are bad, but things are always bad if that's the case. They kept seven, too. Maybe we just lose this. Another workshop. Oh, I was going to say, is that three ball? Interesting. You kept a non-taxing hand against PO. 
Don't like that very much. Maybe they have Chalice follow up. Lotus three ball. Typically, the heuristic in the shops versus PO matchup is you want to keep a hand that has some kind of way to stop your opponent from doing things. Basically, always playing Saga here. Can't really play around. I mean, I can play around Mind Break Trap, but I don't think it's good to play around Mind Break Trap here because the upside of being able to play on our turn is so high. So I'm not going to play around my bear trap. Mm, didn't really have any upside there. Besides getting a saga in play. Which I guess is upside. If I had... I could kill a token creature if I wanted to. Alright, I mean they have to have a wasteland now for this saga. So that's good. They don't have a wasteland. We start making constructs. They do have a wasteland. They have a follow-up. If they follow this up with a sphere, I'll be pretty disappointed because I think that just means like they didn't play it very well. Null rod. Yeah, I guess so. Means I'm not doing much or anything. I assume they drew null rod for turn. Harkle's not a bad one. Problem is I don't have any action, but I have a little time, I guess. They play like I can still kill uh the germ token and they can't re-equip because of Null Rod. Which is kind of interesting. Exposes me to Wasteland, but it buys me a bunch of time and I don't have to use my Hercules. I wanna use my Hercules on a turn that I'm actually going to kill my opponent. Because it's going to take multiple pieces away. I guess if they played an Ancient Tomb here, I would immediately be in trouble about the Shieldra's Edict thing. One card in hand. really like how I can kill this token and not... kind of like this a lot. Each player sacrifice a creature token. Each opponent sacrifices a creature token. I only take two this turn. I'm on a much smaller clock. Though my opponent has a Saga coming off, but they have a Null Rod in play. Vamp? I just don't think there's anything I can vamp for, though, right? Like, I... Uh, when I don't have Tinker in my deck, this vamp looks like shit, huh? Like, I can't vamp for PO because I just don't have enough Moxon yet. Can't vamp for I mean I would normally vamp for Ancestral, right? I just don't I can't vamp for Ancestral, it's already in my yard. I guess theoretically there'd be a world if I had a Yogg in my deck. If I had a Yogg will in my deck, then then oh so maybe we just do need the Yogg will. Though sometimes you even board out Yogg will in this matchup. Like, if I had a Yogwill, I could end of turn Hercules recall, vamp for Yogwill. Yogwill back, Black Lotus, Saga, Ancestral Merchant. It's not bad. Did they hit the land to make Saga tokens? They did. They did hit the land to make Saga tokens. Okay. So... think this is my best opportunity to Hercules. Wish I had a mind twist or a twister or something. But what can I even vamp for? Lorian revealed. Snap ancestral. That's better. Okay. I like that. I don't have any life left, but...
That at least gives me some more options here. I'm gonna have to crack this no matter what, but I guess I could d d determine what time I get to crack this. Soul ring. I think I want a soul ring. All right, I have a negation or whatever that's worth. I have the ability to win off a of PO. I have to negate this null rod, though if they revoke my pedal, things get rough. They get a black lotus here, so they have a bunch of mana. I could have put Luris in my hand. Is that better? I don't think so. What is Luris doing here? It's chump blocking. Returning a black lotus. I guess it's free. I feel like holding up negation to try to hit a, a target is probably more worthwhile, but maybe not. Yeah, the problem is if they like address me in any way, I just can't hard cast negation. I don't know if they'll play around that at all, but only one chump blocker here is not enough either, right? Because they can just lead patchwork and nettle cyst, and immediately they have two things that kill me. So maybe I did need to get Luris. I guess theoretically there's a world where I can still play Luris next turn, but I guess there's no world I play Luris next turn if I, they resolve a Null Rod. So there's like no reason to... Well, no, I guess I would have been able to play Luris, but just wouldn't do anything. Hmm. I mean, their play is just Patchwork, Nettle Sys, Null Rod, right? Probably should strip mine me first so that I can't negate anything. I guess I could counter the Nettle Cyst. Which... Uh, I don't really think I would do that. Golos. What does that do? I guess it's another lethal threat, so... <laughs> It's just going to get him a Saga, right? Interesting. So they have a land in their hand and they're going to tap out and play Null Rod. I'm going to negate it and hopefully draw PL and win. Not bad for me. Surprised by the line my opponent chose in this. Wouldn't it be better to get Black Lotus and try to cast this Null Rod? I think playing a Nettle Cyst and a Null Rod. Oh, they're going to go Wasteland? What the hell? Saga. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense then. And then they're going to play Null Rod, right? So, like, why would we go to Soul Ring if we're going to play Null Rod? Yeah, I mean, this works out, right? Because they... I mean, not it doesn't work out because they... What? They just... They're giving up on the Null Rod? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, well... They named Black Lotus because they're worried about Luris Black Lotus. Yeah, I guess. P.O. Morian revealed. Do I want to thin? That actually makes my the Roger lethal. Uh, so if I buy and play Luris, I survive an extra turn, but then I get everything wastelanded. I just want to win the game. I'm going to cast this Lorien Revealed. Really wanted to drop PO, not Lorien Revealed there. Time walk. Okay. All right. We win. Sweet. Uh, exactly how we drew it up. Time walk. Untap. PO win. So I'm going to cycle the pearl. Just want to hit as many artifacts as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just start with the small PO. And then I have snap. Yeah, the game is over. The game is very, very over. Uh, I don't want to play this. Snap PO. 
draw one extra card for one extra mana. Snap. P.O. Activate, hold priority. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one. Drew another P.O. Game is over. Uh, I can play a top. PO, activate whole priority. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one. Or 13 cards left in my library. Also can Hercules them. I also have another PO. Um, still don't have demonic. I can snap, can't vampiric. Just PO again. Oh, I guess I need to kill my opponent, huh? So I will need to take turns. And I need to make Saga Tokens large enough to kill them. So if this P.O. is... I guess I should spin and look for Vault Key. I don't have Vault Key. So now what do I do? I can cycle a Lorien Revealed. I just need to find Demonic or Key. All right, so now I draw with top, play key, play time vault. Oh, I played Snapcaster. Do I lose? I'll just play time walk, I guess. No, no, I don't lose. All right, go to my next turn, pitch everything, Hercules my opponent. Uh, I can even attack for 10 turns with the Snapcaster, so. Okay, uh, not the cleanest at the end there, but again, my actions don't really matter. I just wanted to not PO again, because if I PO'd again for too much, then I might end up out drawing too many cards. I think no matter what, I'll be fine, because if I have, like, five turns left, I Hercules their board, I make a 10-10 construct, it attacks in two turns, like... I think no matter what, I, I can't really lose there, but is what it is. All right, so far so good. Just thinking about Yogwill mostly. Let's see what we can do in this round three. I have a cat. No cat from my opponent. I'm going to keep this hand. Not thrilled about this hand. Definitely loses to some subsets of the, some subsets of the metagame, but I guess a question is, are we playing Saga on one here? How many decks do we care about having Flusterstorm up on turn one? I feel like the answer is very few, right? And the other question is something like, do you even play Mox on this turn? You don't want to show your opponent that they need to kill the Saga. If we wait and we can hold up Flusterstorm and repeal, that way on the next turn we can hold it all up again. It's probably better to just wait, all things considered. This just gives us the most uh, leeway. The only problem is if we, like, we really need Saga Tokens in a matchup or something, and then we're a turn slower, right? But this gives us like some counter spells, some, some actual uh, removal, maybe. What's going on? My opponent just skipped through their turn. Okay. I did it. Each. Uh, I didn't like F6, so I gave them an opportunity. I usually like to do that in leagues. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to be testing if my opponent... <laughs> okay, so they did it on purpose. Uh, like, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to text any, uh, testing if my opponents are just, like, missing random turns, so maybe I lose some percentage of win percentage, but I always try to, like, F2 through the turn to give my opponent the, t uh, ability to change their mind about their F6. However, my opponent skipped their turn here so they could get their onto their Library of Alexandria, which is certainly a choice. 
Um, I mean, we have constructs, so you're gonna have to do something with your library pretty fast. Don't know what their plan is exactly, but let's we'll see. Well, I have constructs are coming. I have some counter magic, some removal. I have no force. I've chosen not to cycle my Lorien because I feel like I'm going to get to a point at some point here where I can actually make plays casting Lorien, especially with Lotus coming. This is certainly a game where Saga can just win on its own if my opponent decides not to interact with it. I'll have to see what my opponent's doing. I don't know. Not many decks opt to play Library of Alexander anymore. I was actually considering, I was doing a big think on Library recently. Like, do you want to just play library in these Luris Saga decks? Like, what's another colorless land really going to do? Is that a problem? Um, you can, like, get some extra points in the mirror. don't know. So I'm going to make a construct token. My opponent is at eight cards, so they didn't have a mock, so they have a removal spell. No, they're just discarding to hand size. Not the strongest use of library of Alexander, unless you're discarding, like, a grizzle. What the... Ah, it's a paradigm shift. So my opponent is trying to combo me out. Interesting. Uh, upkeep Ancestral, maybe? Oh, I have an answer to that. They should probably have activated their Library of Alexandria, but they didn't. So I marked that as bad for my opponent. Doesn't looks like they have just figured out the problem as well. Either activate the yeah, you have to just activate the library before, and then you can activate the then you can cast the ancestral. So now my opponent is back off of library for this turn after discarding a card to hand size, and they're getting their ancestral pretty much must counter or pretty much guaranteed counter unless they have like pay one days the other, pay one misstep the other. Looks like that might be happening. Maybe, I mean, I didn't have the leeway to like repeal something and up the storm count. So looks like they might force and get ancestral to resolve. Yeah, that's not great for my opponent, but good use for me of this fluster. So we take that. This will pitching chain of vapor. So this will put them back up to seven. Gets them back on their library. I'm out of counter magic. I don't think I'm supposed to make a construct token with this saga. I can just hold it open. There will be a question of whether I am supposed to get a soul ring. Yeah, it looks like soul ring. Could needle library, but doesn't really feel like the problem. I feel like I'm just going to... Get going here. I'm going to continue. I guess I just make a construct. Uh, I mean, I still don't have a counter spell. So if my opponent has some kind of crazy kill, then they get me. Just trying to clock them out here. I need to make these things into 8-8s eight next turn, which seems pretty doable. Opponent's at 9 cards, so if they have, like, Black Lotus, some kind of Oracle kill. Good God, please don't do this to me. I do have Bounce Oracle, for what it's worth. Don't know if that actually helps, but... If I lose this game, I'll be pretty sad. But I didn't have a lot of force. I had one counter spell, and my opponent drew a couple extra cards. Exile all the cards from your library and then shuffle your graveyard into your library. So they're going to go down to three cards and then cast Oracle, I guess. He has to draw another card, though. Okay. Their library is gone. What the? F yep, four Oracles, four Chain of Vapor, Forces, lots of islands. So it's just all islands and then a library of Alexandria and they're passing. Uh... All right. Well, at the end step here, I'm going to attempt to repeal this Black Lotus. It's going to make my opponent do something with it. They can make it so I don't draw by cracking it or just let it go back to their hand. They clearly have the other Oracle in their hand. 
So they couldn't have it. They didn't have any way to draw through this turn. We're going to go to five to six. And we'll just have to draw one artifact to have lethal in play. It's not too bad. My opponent's considering. I mean, like, they could have a fourth chain of vapor, right? They can have flusters and stuff, spell pierces. So I feel like just using my blue mana here, mental misstep. Sure. All right, artifact. Not an artifact. So is it even worth it to make a contract token? Oh, now I only need to be have six. They just put themselves dead on board. Okay, cool. No, I need seven still. God damn it, Justin. Uh, what are we doing? Needle. Key, Opal, Sapphire, Lotus. I feel like we try to repeal the... I mean, I can repeal the Oracle. I just think it's going to get countered is the problem. I can try to PO. That's my best choice if I want to PO. Black Lotus. Not that great. I guess I can get a Black Lotus, repeal the black their Black Lotus, and then I guess I should count one force. Force. Oh, the three cards they put back into their deck were what? Force, uh, uh, Paradigm Shift, and... I don't remember. So they have a force in their hand? Because I only see two forces here. That means they, one of the forces is in their hand. Huh. So what do I do? Mana Crypt. Repeal their Lotus. Go for a PO. Problem is the PO doesn't kill my opponent because it'll be pre-combat and they can just float mana and fluster. This looks really bad for me. PO first, try to draw her into repeal for an extra damage. Yeah, things are bad. What was their third card? I guess I can go back and see what they cast, right? Oh, no, they discarded something to hand size. They discarded Paradigm Shift to hand size. Uh, this resolves? Interesting. Oh, Ancestral Recall. Duh. So their, their pile right now is Ancestral Recall, Paradigm Shift, and Force of Will. Okay. Well, my PO resolved, so... And I have a, miss, a mental misstep for a chain now, so I feel like they're dead. I drew the artifact I needed, so. They're going to force the mana crypt, putting them to 12. Yeah, that doesn't help you. Well, I guess it could help you if I had drawn no artifact. I mean, that still puts you to 12, which is not a good number. So they did have the, the third force in their hand, which I saw here from this pile. What a weird game. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to lose this game. I think my opponent plays optimally. I lose this game, so. Interesting. Why didn't they just force the PO? Doesn't make any sense. They force the PO and I just lose. Okay, you got it, opponent. What the hell is happening? Uh, so, my opponent is on mono blue paradigm shift combo. I should have taken a picture of that. Uh, it doesn't actually help to like hit their yard or anything, right? It just helps to have negations and traps, I guess. Uh, not much to repeal, not much to Hercules. Switch to Hercules and two repeals ago. Okay. Oh, I guess there's not much to needle here. Take a 
a peel instead of a needle. Okay. I have a Luris. This hand slaps. Gonna make him have it. I didn't check how many negations they had. I saw a pack of negation. I saw a pack of negation, force of will. Maybe I should pause the video and go back and look at my VOD. Nah. I forgot. Um, I'll keep the sanctity of the game. I have a million mana. Well, they have a million mana? Poor taunt. Okay. Whatever, I'm just gonna have six. Uh, so I have four mana plus four mana. I have eight mana. Uh, so things are great. Draw. Any draw action? Any action? Mind break trap. Okay. So I guess this means I should cast demonic plus ancestral so I can hold up a hard cast mind break trap. Though if they counter my spell, do I even want to cast mind break trap? No. I'm just gonna get ancestral here. Obviously PO is better, but I think there's some value in having the ability to pay for days and my I didn't see any dazes, but I have an open mind break trap. If they want to like hard cast a negation or something. If they want to fluster somewhere, I technically have that beat. Though I guess that lets them untap and maybe go like shift oracle or something, kill me. Now, do the question becomes, do I actually care about this ancestral? I think the answer is just no, actually. So, kind of interesting. So, they did have PO. I said they did have Fluster. Because I still have Hardcast Trap and I have Saga Backup Plan. I also have Luris. Like, my opponent just used their Black Lotus and their Fluster Storm to make a Force of Will. They have three cards in their deck or in their hand. I feel like I'm just super winning, right? Best draw is like a bobble, I guess. PO is great, obviously. I have like, tons of winning draws. Lorien revealed is great. I, all my draws are so good. Whenever you have these starts, it just feels like cheating. But I guess that's just restricted cards, right? So. Mm -hmm. Untap. This didn't actually help me, did it? I don't think there's any point in playing the Luris this turn. I'd rather just hold open trap. It does signal to my opponent that I probably have force of will, but oh, I guess I only had seven mana on turn one, right? Slight miscounting. But I had the ability to cast Trap because I had the extra mana. So I didn't have the ability to play around days. I had the ability to cast Trap. I did have the ability to cast Trap, but I didn't have the ability to... <laughs> so I, did I have the ability to Demonic for PO? Yeah, because that's six mana. Okay. I feel like I had some major misconceptions about how much mana I had. That's okay. We're okay with that. I've had some weird decks in this league, huh? Reanimator? Mono Black Reanimator? Um, shops, Golo shops, and whatever this is. I know that it should be hard for me to lose this game. But I don't have a draw engine at the moment, so. But I have a saga, so it's going to be closing around quick. I wish I had a draw card. I mean, how many draw spells are in my deck? I have four POs, four Lorians, two Bobbles, Vamp, Merchant. More can a guy, how much more can a guy really have?
feel like I just hold this Misty in my hand. Like, what is this Misty even doing? Oh, they're going to force that? <laughs> sure. Don't care. <laughs> just legitimately could not care. Let's just fetch for thinning. I have a 7-7 a seven, seven construct. It's going to be an 8-8 eight, eight construct. I'm going to have two 8-8 eight, eight constructs and a mind break trap. I don't care about Luris. Opponent should not be forcing that. I guess, theoretically, like, I do can get a bobble off of my Luris, or my Saga, and then I have Saga bobble, and they can't beat that, but, like, better just let Luris resolve and go for your combo kill with force backup, right? Though, it's probably pretty hopeless at this point for them anyways. No rod. Again? Gonna let this one resolve. Don't care. Do I care? I want to make a second construct is my problem. They can't kill me in two spells, right? So it's probably fine. Uh, is there, like, something I can needle? I will needle step through, I guess. Well, if they have chain, I guess, or Hercules, maybe. I don't know. So if they can kill me here in two spells, so be it. Okay. Where's the saga, baby? All right, great news, chat. I have a cookie. So we're definitely winning this one. Opponent has a pretty high likelihood of being on Luris. Oh, sorry, not Luris. I'm on Luris. Opponent has a high likelihood of being on Oath. They've been playing Oath recently. Makes holding this repeal a little bit enticing. Probably bobble them and see if we can figure out what they're on. Make our plays make more sense. Like, I want to keep this hand, but it obviously has... This hand has some demerits as well, right? So, Let's see, Let's see what they're on first. Force of will. Hmm. I think I'm gonna try to deploy my sensei's top here. Well then, I will not be deploying my sensei's top here. Perkle's recall, not a great draw. All right, so my opponent has a Misty and a Force. I have a repeal that can buy us a turn against a, a spirit token, or if I get enough, it can bounce the oath. Did hit a mana crypt, not a bad one. Makes me really wish I had resolved my top, as I would have the ability to do top key things. Get this free key in play, and I actually get to hold up the ability to repeal. Though, I don't have the ability to... Bluster and repeal. Which could be a problem. My opponent jams an oath here with force backup. There's not a lot I can do, really. There's just really not that much I can do, right? Obviously, I can repeal the token. That will buy us some time. But I don't have a way to... 
uh, make sure that resolves either. So it might just make more sense to repeal this oath and hope they don't have force it, I guess. They might just choose not to. I don't think I'm supposed to like wait and try to hit a blue source. I just like that has too many bad problems with just like not drawing the right card. Now, though, if I can hit a blue source, I can have repeal and, and fluster back up. A force now. So now I have force fluster. So now I have a clock, though, knowing my mana crypt. I don't know if this races my mana crypt. So that'll be interesting. We also have a backup plan of repeal. So I kind of like our spot now. Let's see what happens. Maybe my opponent has lots of counter magic. Here's an oath. I'm going to force the oath pitching the Hercules. See if my opponent forces back. We do pitching Tinker. That's good for us. I will fluster your force. And then if you continue to counter my things. So they could just fluster my force if they still have fluster. Or they could just force my force. Looks like they have something. Ancestral recall. Uh, that's a pretty damn good one. Yup. So they had Tinker, Force, Oath, Orchard, Ancestral. Not bad. Not bad. Did you draw a new Force? They did. Damn. All right. I'm lucky. Force pitching Oko. So that's two Forces are gone. Probably likely to only have one or two negations in their deck, so that's nice for us. Want to flip? Let's see, let's repeal their oath. I guess I should have played around days. Ooh, Pio is nice. Also, attack them to eleven. Not a bad spot. Not a good spot because they do have an oath coming here. Three cards in hand. Yeah. I don't know. They could have a bunch of blanks. Traxas. Who knows? Soaring. All right. Well, it's PO time. I guess technically I could snap and repeal this Oath of Druids. Snap and repeal. That makes my PO better, but... How likely am I to win the game off this PO? Fairly high, I would think. Probably better to just jam and hope it works. Okay. So now I hope still have a Snapcaster Mage. Should have enough mana to make that a reality as well. Key is free. I also have a Merchant for a uh, another PO. So two, three, four. That's still yeah. I have a Snap PO PO my whole board again damn just like old times and then i have volky you love to see it Ooh, that was a beautiful win with big props to Repeal and big props to Pio. And big props to Snapcaster Mage for, that's what, for what it's worth. I like that win a lot. I like that win a lot. Felt good. Uh, Hercules out. Negation in. Uh, cage in. Edict. 
feel like it has the versatility we're looking for. May be able to buy us a turn that we need to win. Needle on Oko. Worth or not worth? Snapcaster. Kind of think I want to not have Snapcaster in general in the Oath matchup, even though it was obviously good in that game. Also think this Needle is probably just not necessary. It names Besage you, and it names Oko. Is that really... Do we care? I think I'd rather just take it out. All right. We still have a lot of options in this matchup. I like the repeals here. Everything looks good. This deck is pretty lean, not lean, but it's like very, I don't know. It's got a lot of four ofs. I like it. Four force, four, four, four Lorian, four repeal, four PO, and then restricted blue cards, restricted artifacts. I like this deck, it's cool. So far, so good. The only thing I'm thinking about is maybe this Yogwill gets fit in somewhere. I'm not sure where. Don't know if we want two baubles. I like the idea of the first bobble a lot. Because the first bobble means you have some options with Luris. But how many baubles do we need? So this hand has a force blue card. Saga const. Yeah, this is this hand's sick. We haven't really engaged in any, like, saga, blue saga mirrors yet, which is something we need to keep in mind. And something we'll have to look at when testing. But so far, we've engaged in a lot of non-saga matchups that we've been able to leverage. Yeah, you can have a demonic. Obviously, there's some downside to letting them demonic. They can like uh, go oath plus fluster on the, on the with this, but still should just let them demonic. All right, here it's a pretty reasonable looking. I guess we'll just check out their top card. I could check out my card and cycle away with Lorian. Yeah, probably the case. Island. Um, let's cycle Lorian here. So that does limit my, um, does limit my force a little bit. Because I kind of like the idea of PO. My opponent's deck isn't super well equipped. I mean, it, my opponent's deck is like my, my oath deck, um, with some changes, but it's not super well equipped to deal with. Pio, Tinka, Narset. I hate Narset. I think that card's so bad right now. Uh, it's good against Pio, though, but it's not that good against Pio. Like, I have active creatures coming at it right now, but it does draw them two cards in eight. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to force it, though. I could kill it one for one with them getting an impulse with my Shieldra's Edict if I want to. I can just let them double impulse and attack it. It's probably the best play. I feel I just feel like if I force this, then I don't have force for their good cards, right? And they demonic. I don't think they would demonic for Narset, but they might demonic for Narset after seeing PO. But like they also saw Saga, right? Or did they not see Saga? Oh, they hit Time Walk. Interesting. Uh 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 uh. So now I have to make some choices. I think I'm just going to take the L and you can take their Planeswalker. Obviously, this is a loss of resources, but I think this is more acceptable. If they want to force this, by all means. I have a problem with, like, I can't actually make this token because my opponent can go Oath Time Walk. 
guess theoretically if they have an orchard they can do that anyways but i don't think i'm going to be making the token here which is why although i guess if they force this i'll probably be making the token then we can just force the time walk uh okay so i'm just gonna not make the token there's no reason to expose myself here i have double force active saga with a cage not bad six cards in my opponent's hand though definitely getting outvalued obviously like edict for narsa is not good value you got a time walk you have an oath too oh no oath that's fine then not even bad for me then. They did have the orchard. And then another pass. Interesting. Well, no reason for me to worry about Besiege you at this point. So I think I'm just going to be making a construct and getting a cage. If they Besiege you my saga, that's also fine. New Saga. It's a nice plan. All right. I like the spot we're in with all these forces. Been very happy with Saga so far in this set. But again, we haven't faced the Wasteland Saga matchup. So that's the one thing I want to be most key in. But so far, I've been very happy with Saga. So here's a Vigor on the Cage and the Saga with four mana and three cards. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to force Pitching P.O. They're going to force down to one, Pitching Mental Mist up, and then I'm going to force. And if they top deck and rip, then they rip. Surprised my opponent didn't just hard cast this Vigor. Was there any reason not to hard cast the Vigor? I don't know. Maybe I'll find out. Like, there's no... They can just hard cast the Vigor. They get a, I get a 1-1, one, one, but, like, who cares, right? Would they pitch? They pitched an Oko. They'd have so many more options, right? Maybe I was just baited into using all my forces into a bad play, but this is kind of my only line, right? Like, what other line do I have? Lose my cage in Saga, have just a thing in play, and try to fight over Oath? Maybe. How big is my thing, though? It's just a 3-3. Three, three. Takes a long time to win. Here's an Oath. So they can have a Besiege you as their last card, maybe. How much I can do about that one? I didn't board in the Needle, right? Well, I guess I... There's no reason not to just make... Hmm? Uh... Attack. And then put Luris in hand, I guess. All right, so if they have a Besaju, just lose. If they have a, a hard cast Vigor, we also just lose. That's okay. They could also activate it, put the thing on top, and then show and tell. No, well, looks like they had brainstorm into besiege you. Yeah, not much I'm gonna ever be able to do about that realistically. So, here comes Atraxa. They have Tinker. So they also have Tinker now. Or they can go Ancestral, Oko, lots of choices here. Lots of choices here. Besiege you number two as well. Man, pretty brutal. Must have been a pretty good brainstorm, huh? Oath, Besiege you. They only had one card in hand, and then they drew for turn and brainstormed. Yeah, can't draw it up much better than that. There's no point in this game would I ever have had a needle. So, so they got Besaju, Negation, Sapphire, Oko, Tinker.
I should probably just take the oath too. Pitch to vigor if you top deck it. Okay. Well, are they gonna tinker or are they going to Oko? Or are they going to besiege you? Looks like Tinker. They have to be careful here that they don't die. If they go too low, I can uh, Manifold Key kill them. Though they haven't played a land yet, so if they hit a land off of Citadel, they can besiege you. So maybe, maybe that's not very likely. Yeah. I can get a cage back. I guess they just turn off the cage with Oko. And my deck is so redundant. I don't really think I li dislike the way we played the game, though there were obviously different choices we could have made. Negation covers a lot here. Between Negation and Besaju, theoretically, they cover a lot. My opponent is paused on the top card, which makes me think it's an Atraxa. Because that would put them to 5 and be in, in range of maybe dying, but then they would be able to look at 10 cards. Yeah, it was exactly right. Atraxa. So there's like some risk inherent in this. Um, they did hit a Tropical Island, though. So now they'll have Besage you up, and so that should cover them. They also hit a Vigor, but then they also hit the, another Oath. So they have the green card for Vigor as well. Don't think it's possible for my opponent to lose from here. They have Vigor green card, Force blue card, Land besage you. Yeah, looks real bad. Drop, Null Rod, Attracts a Force, Oath, Show. Yup. It's bad. Can you besage you my saga? Mm. Don't think I have a lot of options here. I'm just going to vigor my constructs. And they have force. Yeah. I did draw time fold. Interesting. So the problem is, even if I cage them from here, I still just get Oko. Oh, so we're, we're locked out of this one. I don't think we had a lot of choices after my opponent besieged you does. I'm going to continue with the same plan. I don't, I don't think I want a needle for besieged you or Oko. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's fine. Let's get one needle in here. We don't need this island, right? Can I go to 11 lands? They do have a... They do have a... They do have a Null Rod in their deck. I didn't get the needle in in time. Okay. That's fine. Not super worried about that. Yuck. Better. Much better. Hand slaps. Just gonna keep everything that's not this repeal and jam, jam, jam. Obviously, my opponent can have negations and traps and stuff, but whatever. It's fine. See what we can get away with. I 
Force pitching Narsa. Well, hope they don't have vigor too. I'm gonna try to cantrip this crypt, I think. Won't have really have time to do this later. I mean, if they have vigor green card, vigor green card, force blue card, huh? All right, yeah, you got me. So this was a uh, saga, classic saga outing. All right, so my opponent had force blue card, ants for ancestral, force green card for saga, and I have nothing left. Pretty dead. I really don't feel like I'm supposed to play that differently. My opponent just had every answer, right? I'm always keeping ancestral like that. Not much I could have changed. Still a winnable game, of course, but definitely going to be challenging. Half ready for them to just tinker me right there. <sighs> wouldn't I guess if that was my plan, maybe I was supposed to keep repeal instead of PO, but it, it wouldn't have like really mattered at all. But still, repeal is like a little bit better than PO for one. I mean, the good news is my opponent's deck has like no draw engines and is very clunky, so like I have time to rebuild. They had to use their Oath and their Narset to stop me. So it's not like they gave up nothing in exchange. But we are down three mana. So not great. They're going to negate this? Or what are they doing? Mental misstepping this? That's fine. I will absolutely let you mental misstep this and hold my mental misstep for when you draw Ancestral. I know you, opponent. I know what you do. Demonic. I think I have enough excess blue cards. Assuming this is just getting Oath. That would make the most sense to me. I think this matchup is probably pretty reasonable for the PO player. Like most turns, you don't actually have to go in on a PO into get into getting vigored. It just happened that that turn I didn't really have a lot of other options. Uh, obviously, I could have kept the PO and just time walked, but. Yeah, I mean, obviously that would be better, but I think cycling was fine. Because I was going to be making constructs the other two turns anyways. Yeah, I think in general, ooh, I held it. They just had fluster back up. Seems good, but yeah, this was a very good job by me on not taking missed up bait. My opponent should have just held this missed up and let the key resolve. Who cares about a key? Just really irrelevant card to counter when I have Luris in my deck. So I like how we played this game. I just don't think it's gonna work out. I have to draw a land here, time walk, land, Luris. Well, I guess I do have 17 turn clock. They have one card in hand. Yeah, I think this game is just lost if they just don't counter this missed uh, key. Just true oath off the top? Like, what? Come on now. Be real with me. I've drawn all forces off the top, so I guess that's something as well. There's a lot of dead draws in my opponent's deck, but it doesn't seem like they're drawing those ones yet. Two oaths, two... A Tinker, Show and Tell, Repeal. 
probably worth i guess i'll just hold up force i was thinking about like repealing the jet but i have another force and all of their threats are negatable so i might as well hold it up i'd love to hit land drops and get to the point where i can play this luris and rebuy lotus and i'll be very happy soul ring it's a good one hard cast force it might negation seems correct Ooh, baby this is a game of magic the gathering that's for sure lotus i guess i can counter this to stop atraxa but i think that is just losing play they have atraxa all right well that's fine I, I I mean I saw the risk here in letting this this Lotus resolve, but if they just like don't have an attraction in play, it's so bad. Yeah, you got me, homie. You drew top tech lotus, top deck oath. <laughs> uh, I think it's just too bad to counter Lotus there. If I want to try to win the game instead of not lose the game. Like, I can counter Lotus there to try not losing the game, but if I want to win this game, I have to let Lotus resolve and just hope they don't have Atraxa. Though it does open them up to have four more draws that are good in their deck, which is really bad, considering how, like, in many situations in this kind of battle, my opponent's deck, which is my deck, so I know they know very well, will just top deck the wrong cards and lose. In this case, they top decked a lot of good cards and won, but... Hmm... If they have an Atraxa in hand, stops that, and then I can't counter a show, but that is saying that they always have an Atraxa in hand. So the problem, I guess, thinking about this slightly more, is that if I don't counter Lotus, then I can never counter show. Whereas if I counter Lotus and I draw another counter, I can counter show. But if I... I'm countering Lotus to turn off four Traxa draws. I turn on show and tell draws. But if I if they have show and tell already, not countering Lotus turns off show and tell, but it turns on a Traxa. I don't know. Maybe it all evens out. Kind of a disappointing way to end the set though, but I mean, we had a powerful hand. It just wasn't good enough. All right, here we go for the fifth and final round of this Vintage Testing League. So far, okay. It's been okay. I, you know, we've gotten vintage a little. We did some vintaging. This hand is doing the vintaging for sure. Got to choose what we want to do with this hand. We do have the opportunity to PO for three right away. I think that's a little bit worse than just going Merchant Ancestral. Reason being is if we do make it to our Ancestral, this can draw us additional artifacts to bring back with our PO. Like this resolving into Moxin plus land. That doesn't exactly count, right? Because while this key is free... It does not get us to four mana. But that's okay. We have a force. We have this. We can put the Luris in our hand. And play this bobble. I'm going to use the bobble even though I lose a card off Pio. Just to get a better idea of what's happening here. Mana crit. Uh, also because I want to get a second blue card for double force if that's necessary. Obviously, I can't cast the Luris current. I guess I can't cast the Luris currently, but if I were to double force their payoffs and then untap and draw a land, I could then cast Luris and rebuy Bobble. Luris is kind of broken, huh? It's kind of interesting to me that it took so long for Luris to come back into the metagame as a prominent feature after it was unbanned. Like, it's been around as, like, different Jeskai decks and that kind of thing, but it really took people playing with, uh... Lorien revealed and Saga to 
to get the uh, Luris back to its position of power. I still think that Luris Luris is definitely one of the broken parts of this deck. Not this deck, but like all these decks. Like obviously Saga is something and Lorien is something, but like Luris just having an extra eighth card is so so silly. People complain a lot about like uh you know being able to have your saga land do stuff but like having luris as your you know you both expel force of will resources and then you have a luris after is also pretty broken uh i'm just going to force this dahlia because it will turn off my other force i know my opponent has a mana crypt in hand so they can go like mana crypt another play here if they have they want so it was a mono white draw i should be very thankful my opponent did not have a cavern of souls See if I have to counter this next one here. If it's a White Plume Adventure, I'm letting it result. It's a Brutal Cathar. Yeah, you got it, homie. <laughs> I thought like a White Plume Adventure or something. No, my opponent's just dead. I think the PO was a higher upside than the Lorien revealed, which is why I kept it instead. Uh, so I can look at my top card and see if I want to draw it with repeal. Oh wait, no, I can't. What the fuck am I talking about? Oh, I definitely don't want that card. I wasn't going to do that anyways, so. Uh, oh, I guess I still cannot play Luris <laughs> until next turn, huh? Uh, I mean, I'm not bouncing this Brutal Cathar, so you're a move opponent. I mean, they have one card left. It's a Mana Crypt. I have... Luris Force, 8 million mana. Lorien Revealed. If they try to flip this thing, I'm just going to... I'm just going to bounce this pearl at the end step. I think I might just bounce this thing. If I bounce that thing, then they can just Luris me, right? Oh, this is only if they cast spells, right? So then I would flip back and they would get my guy. Okay, I'll just bounce this thing. All right, tails never fails. We go black, black, this, Luris. Rebuy Black Lotus. Cast Lorian revealed. Leave myself a blue mana for PO. Draw PO, win the game. Uh, I have buyback Luris too. Why not? Extra card for me, and my opponent is dead. Guess Luris is always free with a Lotus in my yard as well. It's kind of silly, though. I'd have to actually make two black mana, so not exactly free. All right, let's do this again. I guess I can just make two black mana, so it is free. At this point, I can actually pick the Lotus back up. PO, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Just looking for our vault key. There it is. I'll throw the time vault out first to hopefully get a concession. the key. I want to tap my vault. You should concede. Play a saga. Why are we here still? Opponent. They went for a coffee break. Respectable. All right. I can hit him with the you're all you're dead. You are already dead. Well, 
Opponent was kind of dead on turn one when they played a Brutal Cathar instead of any other magic card, though. Though I respect it. I respect the Brutal Cathar. It is a sweet one. All right, they just... <laughs> we got back to my turn, and they were off it. So, this is good, though. I'm happy to play against Mono White. It's a good testing experience, though we did end up with on... Uh, we ended up with no people opponents who were on Luris Saga, which is not great for testing. We're going to bring in all of our removal spells in our island. Uh, extra basics is really good here, and then maybe we'll bring in Negation to help hit their artifact mana accelerants. We'll see. Uh, we obviously have fluster storms, missteps, probes, and hercules that are all bad. Uh, like snapcaster repeal is fine. It's actually like kind of a nice one against chalice if you're on the draw. We're not on the draw, obviously. Dig through time is a little slow though, so let's try this and go like that and hit submit. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm a Luris deck. I've got a Dismember and Fast Mana and Saga. Yeah, let's do this. Obviously, there are draws from Mono White that will punish this kind of keep, but that's okay. Let's see what we'll have to see what they play though. I think the worst outcome... Even Archon's not too bad here. We just play Saga Emerald Go. It's not that bad. Sure. Sure. That is not the strongest hand. Oh, I spoke too soon. Ah, <laughs> yes. Well done, opponent. You've turned off your soul ring. Not saying that they're bad or wrong, but they did do that. I'm going to play these Magic the Gathering cards, and then I'm going to play out the top as well. Obviously, this turns off my ability to play Dismember this turn, but if they play Athalia, which is the only thing they can play unless they have an Ancient Tomb, uh, then I can't cast Dismember anyways, so I'd rather just deploy my things in case I draw Telerian Academy. Uh, but, I mean, uh, this Null Rod was obviously good. Look at my hand. Black Lotus, Moxon, Sensei Stop, Second Emeria, Tapped. Cool. All right. If we draw another land, we can get our saga going. We did. Kind of an awkward one, but a land it is. I think we're in a commanding position in this game, unless we get wastelanded. My opponent did not wasteland me. So now we are just straight up winning the game. You do love to see it. Yep, that's turned off by your Null Rod. Oh, and no Wasteland, no land, no nothing. All right, I will make a million a million. And then I will make an a million a million. I guess I will actually not make it a million a million, and I will instead use this to land so that I can make two creatures instead. Uh, I'm going to get a Needle, and I'm going to Needle Wasteland, and then I'm going to cycle this, I'm going to go get an Underground Sea, play an Underground Sea, make it a million, a million, attack for a million, a million, easy peasy, mono white easy, you may can see the game. All right. Not bad, not bad. So 3-2, we had a tough close loss to Oath and a loss to Mono White Reanimator. Overall, the deck worked really well. Saga was quite good um, in basically all of our matches, right? Can't recall. Like We got baited into a Saga hand once or twice. It got removed by a Vigor in that one game, but overall, like it was still presenting pretty powerful play in that game. Needle Main is a suspect card. Sensei's top. I like Sensei's top. Um, two Fluster. Hercule, maybe. This one negation has been okay. The only real question to me is, like, what about Yogwill? Do we want to play Yogwill to give us access to PO? I think Snapcaster gives us access to PO better. And then uh, Luris gives us access to the Vulky in the yard. So I think the Snapcaster is probably better. I think the one time where I was looking to vamp for Yogwell, we did end up vamping for Snap anyways, right? So I think it's probably fine. So 
I'm gonna keep it list as it is. Edict even was um pretty reasonable. I don't think I have any complaints about the deck list. I don't see anything I want to change immediately. So I will probably keep this as it is and maybe run it for the challenge. Uh, I do plan on recording the challenge. I won't be streaming it, but I do think I'm going to record the challenge and, and see how it goes. So thank you for watching. If you want to see more vintage content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down in the bottom. Tell me how much I'm a jerk face for playing PO after saying I would never play PO again. Call me a liar. It's good for the engagement. And make sure you tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for more videos like this one. I will see you then.